I think it's okay. Maybe there's... Okay. So, uh, good morning to everyone, and uh, uh, I am Brigida Blasi. Thanks, uh, Professor Sancassani, for your brilliant introduction. And uh, I am very pleased to be here, and it's an honor for me to be in such a prestigious forum about open education. So really, thank you to Professor Sancassani, to METID, and also to Politecnico di Milano. Where do I come from? Firstly, apart from this uh, uh, first presentation by Professor Sancassani, I would like to tell you a few words on my institution. We are in charge of the evaluation of universities and research institutes in Italy, and the, the, the regulatory framework that uh, instituted the agency asked us to evaluate the quality of processes, results, and products of management, teaching, research, including technology transfer. So this is the departure, the departure point for our work. So in the agency mission, all the elements of the university, of the academic world, are there. We have research evaluation side by side with teaching evaluation and also third mission evaluation and the administration, the management um, evaluation. But still, even if we are side by side this kind, this different kind of uh, assessment, it is important to say that the, um, the work on third mission was really a big challenge for us. Mm, the, first, um, the first challenge was how to define what, uh, how the university can impact on, on the world. I don't, I don't love very much the word to impact because it seems something a bit violent. But anyway, we uh, really um, believe that the university can create benefits for the whole society. So let, let's call them impact. Um, but still, uh, it's a challenge to define it, but also you can imagine to measure it and to evaluate it. I won't go through all the path that uh, um, has brought us to today and to the, to the, to the um, present framework of evaluation of third mission. Here you have this slide and you can keep it in memory and in any case we can keep in touch uh, also in the future. But um, the most important thing um, for me uh, to say today in this venue is that uh, uh, I would like to share some brief ideas, uh, some opening ideas about the relationship between university and society and uh, the different models of innovation and uh, the, the emerging idea of open science that is maybe the sister of open education. Let's start from the model of innovation. In 1995, um, Henry Etkovitz, a famous, one of the most famous scholar in uh, innovation studies, uh, theorized the presence of triple helix. That is to say that academia, together with industry and government, created together by their interaction what we call innovation. So um, there was a circulation flow of things, of people and information and products, technologies, that was uh, around, that went around academia, government and in industry. And the role of the academia was to train human resources and to produce scientific knowledge and develop uh, technologies for application, basically, and to make them available to society. So society was the main target, and it was quite passive in this process. Together with this idea of triple helix, also the idea of mode two of science, of knowledge production, arise. And the idea is that uh, there's no longer uh, a notion of science that is uh, uh, a fundamental research uh, organized into disciplines, but rather multidisciplinary teams that work together to solve specific real-world problems. This is a, um, undoubtedly uh, a progress in this sense, but still 
the model is very linear in the sense that universities produce basic research, curiosity-driven research, so completely detached from the real world. And um, there are subjects that are in charge of uh, the application, so at the border, at the boundary of the universities, uh, universi what Gibbons called university-related institutions, for example, technology transfer offices or science incubators. And at the end of the process, there was the firm that bought the product, the technology, and used, used it and uh, applied to the, what we call the real world. So strict boundaries and linearity. But that model was a huge success. Uh, Henry X. Kovitz is one of the most important uh, reference for, who, for those who study innovation. Recently, the model has been strongly revised. For example, just to give you a hint on this, we have a study of 2009 by Karayanis and Campbell that is um, on quadruple helix and mode three of science. Here, some new elements are added, and uh, also because um, an idea of media-based democracy emerges. So the helix becomes from triple to quadruple. The mode from mode two, it becomes, we, we enter in mode three of science. What does it mean? A multi-layered, multimodal, multinodal, and multilateral system where complex Complex network configurations are there. So the linearity of, uh, of, uh, um, of, the, of the first models give the way to more complex models that are no, no longer linear and implies more than one, uh, more than three helices and what this, just Henry Etzkovitz called the enupel of helices. As you can see in 2012, the helix becomes even quintuple. So the basic idea is that there are integrating and differentiating forces that interact together in the scientific world. What about academia? What about the role that university has in society? What is the relationship that this uh, social actor has with the rest of society? In the mode two uh, paradigm, the university was seen as articulated in three basic missions. Teaching on one side, research on the other side. The management of the university was at the, the very core of the, of the institution. And then you have third mission activities. Something more peripheral, with a strong boundary between in respect, in relation to the other missions, and with the strong reference with the outside world, something that were more dealt with external actors. But as Goddard in this uh, beautiful book, The Civic University, teaches us, a set of drivers are uh, paving the way to a new, a completely new model of universities. We are in challenging times, and uh, we have just said, we have just told it. So the digital transformation, globalization, climate change, political devolution, the aging of the population and other social factors, the emerging values, different values that are emerging, such as individualism, are completely transforming the role of the university in, in, the, in the present world. And the university, the missions of university, of the university become functions of the university that are completely integrated among them. So teaching and research together with engagement, no longer a third mission, an alter mission, but rather something very embedded in the university world, and uh, some um, intersection between the functions um, allow the university to generate something new in the world, to really impact on it, to transform it, 
to um, response to societal challenges. And uh, civil society is no longer a passive subject, but really asks something to the university in the present world. And as you can see, it is from the, 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 part, the below part, the engagement, it's, it is from the society that some inputs go to teaching and research. You can see in the, in the, in the, in the spheres that cross the soft boundary of the new civic university. This is the precondition for democracy, according to Greg Kalun, Thesis 11. So what about a third mission? In the very first models, it was another pillar. And it was based on a one-way process of transfer of knowledge, of technology, from the university to society. Then the idea evolved in something like an exchange, so a two-way process. And now the present uh, um, debate is more focused on co-production and co-creation. This is a, a picture that I really appreciated from Coventry University that is focused on the case of the healthcare research. Here you can see that there's no longer uh, space for linearity. Interactions are everywhere, and policies, government, what Etskovitz called government, as well as the private sector commissioning, as well as the patients that have to benefit from cures, from therapies, and their needs that become the starting point of the research design. So all of this creates a real social impact that is clearly difficult to be measured. A last trend of change I would like to analyze with you briefly today, the trend of open science. A strong debate also on this topic, no judgment about this, but for example, PLOS make this kind of modelization. Horizon 2020 gives us this word cloud about words open science. This is a representation of uh, uh, the different stages where open can enter the research life cycle. As you can see, as your conference bags say today, we never close. University is open 24-7. So open science can be part of the concept at the, at the early stage of idea and proposal, can be among the toolkit of the scientists with open notebook, open data, open source, open codes, can be the publication channel based on openness with green and gold open access. And also the review process can be characterized by openness. And then also education and training can be based as you, you, as you teach me on openness with open education resources. And also engagement, what we call engagement it can be really something open to citizen if we think about citizen sciences experiences, for example. So let me wrap it up very briefly. Let me be back to my planet in the huge galaxy of science and education. What Anvor is trying to do in these in this years is, as I told you, first of all, to define what third mission is, and the first thing we have learned is that third mission is much more than technology transfer, and that probably the third mission is not a, a third one. We, from the very beginning, we intended it as the openness of the university towards the socioeconomic context through the valorization and transfer of knowledge. And this is something not only related to technology, but that also encompasses social and cultural bene benefits. What we call the production of public goods. 
how to measure, how to define it for, for us is the very big challenge. We have tried to do it in different experiences and I will give you some hints about it. In the first research assessment exercise, we evaluated our mission just basing on simple metrics based on countings. So number of spin-off companies, for example. So the classical technological transfer metrics. But still there, we introduced cultural activities indicators and also public engagement indicators to enrich the vision and the photography of the university. Recently, in the last, um, in the last years especially, we are trying to broaden further this concept also to include um, something that uh, really uh, allow us to capture what, the, the, what kind of dialogue the university has with the society around. And for example, we have introduced patient empowerment initiatives in healthcare research and uh, open education initiatives, for example, massive open online courses, and also uh, citizen science initiatives. Just to um, tell you that we are doing few steps forward in this direction. Here are some further readings, but really thank you for this occasion to share with you uh, this, uh, this road of ours. And um, I really, I really um, hope that the progress in this direction of knowledge transfer, but especially knowledge mobilization, will improve also thanks to your inputs. And uh, enjoy this uh, prestigious conference and good work. Thank you. <laughs>